Okay, so we're going to start with some burnt umber. Any kind of dark brown will work. And we need a piece of sponge, which I will have to fetch. All right, cut off a hunk of sponge. And we'll get that ready. And you don't want to get too much paint on there. But you want to make a nice dark base for some kind of random rusty spots. I like the sponge is it's it's a very forgiving technique as long as you don't put too much paint on there it's uh, it's pretty easy to work with and it also gives you the option of some very fine sort of splatter type work And I just use the paint neat. I don't thin it out for this. You just be careful not to overload the sponge. You can kind of knock it back a little bit if you do happen to go a little crazy with it. And you want to try to be a little random. All right, so that's a good base. Our next color will go up a little bit with our friend Nutmeg Brown, but any kind of red brown is fine. We want a little bit of a a red component, like a a saddle brown or you know, whatever you want to call that. And just lay that in on top of your darker brown and that'll give it some depth also because you know rust generally unless it's really really old rust and it's all that same sort of very very dark brown color it's generally got a couple of different tones to it depending on how fresh it is This sort of acts almost as a highlight as well. Okay, so that's uh, just kind of do that to taste, but it doesn't take much to build up a, a pretty convincing rusty metal look. So that'll make your, your roof look pretty gnarly. So just in that little bit of time, our glue has firmed up pretty well. It's one of the reasons I use that Eileen's tacky glue is it sets up pretty quick, but if I needed to pull that off, I still could with there, you know, pretty much no damage. I'm going to do add a little bit of glue to this piece surrounding the door, and we'll glue that in place. Maybe. Okay, we'll push that right in there. Get that seated. And that PVA should hold that in there very nicely. So we'll let that dry, but let's in the meantime get kind of a preview of the fact that I don't know how to put this house together and I built it. There we go. 
had to do it, had to hold my mouth right. But as you can see, it's starting to weather up nicely, and we'll add some basing. And unlike my fallout stuff, it's not going to be like scorched wasteland basing. There's going to be some greenery to it, and that'll help sort of offset the drabness of it. So we'll let that dry for a little bit, and we'll be back. I got done putting on that initial rust effect. I thought it looked a little dark. So I went back and added just a little highlight of some light orange. Um, you can do this with craft paint, but it's tough to find a craft paint that's got enough color to it to really make that effect happen. Um, it's not impossible, so if that's all you have, then by all means try it. It may take a couple of applications. Uh, it's just easier with the high pigment colors that you get that are actually for models. I don't normally use model colors on terrain because they're expensive, but in this case it's one of those things that it's kind of the better option. So, uh, but that really gives that rust that additional highlight and makes it look, look a little deeper. So, and completely optional, uh, your, dust, your rust can be uh, all dark or you could be much, much lighter because if it's fresher. But uh, there's no one way to do rust. I mean, go out into the world, I know, gasp, go outside, and look at actual rusty corrugated metal or other things that are rusty, old cars or whatever, and you'll see a lot of different tones and even some different textures. And uh, just try to kind of incorporate that and, and give your, your buildings kind of a real life quality. And uh, I, you'll be happy that you did. So because I do things out of order quite often, um, I should have put the texture, I should have put the base and the texture together uh, before I did some of these other things. It was just easier to paint this off of the base. So um, normally I would have had this all based and everything before I started painting, but it's just not the way we did it this time. And I, hopefully the hobby police won't come take my building away. But um, I'm going to put in also a kind of a jam down on the bottom of the door there that I had forgotten to put in. We'll uh, go ahead and weather that and glue it in place. And then I'm going to put some sand on here and we'll paint that. All right, so we've got that jam in place. What we're going to do is put a coat of PVA on there. And then we'll add some of our basing sand, which is just... Uh, sand that was actually for use with concrete uh, or some kind of masonry. I got this from a construction site years and years ago. Yeah. And the price was right because it was free. If you, I mean, you can use very fine sand or whatever. This is just what I happen to have. You could also put that in a sieve and screen out the larger chunks. And we'll just take a an old brush and we will just kind of smear it on there. And here again, this is one of those times that neatness counts. I kind of wish I'd done all this before I started painting, but sometimes I'm a little hard headed. I guess that's the, the thing. As long as you can be 10% smarter than the terrain piece, you you know, you're, you're golden. And sometimes I have a problem with that, so I'm not always up to that level. But anyway, there's some glue on there. We'll take some sand and kind of put that on. Okay. And we'll just do that all the way around. If you do happen to get some glue kind of where you don't want it, just get some water on a brush and just kind of wipe it off of there. Uh, you know, there again, PVA, very forgiving medium. All right, so we've got that sand 
put on there. And it doesn't have to look great. We're going to put some grass and tufts and whatnot on there. And if you find a bald spot you want to cover up with more sand later, you can just put some glue in there and some sand and it'll be glorious. Um, so we'll let that dry and then we'll work a little more on it. While I'm waiting for that uh, basing sand to dry, I am going to take some thinned out black paint and just go along the top of these walls to kind of delineate inside from outside and just sort of neaten that up a little bit. That's totally optional. I mean, you don't have to do it and you could do it in, you know, white or that cream color or whatever. I just happen to choose black. That'll sort of neaten that up a little bit. All right, so we'll get all of that and be right back. All right, so that just kind of smartened that up a little bit. I had some some of the white paint that had splashed over onto it and uh, gave it a little bit cleaner appearance. So like I said, again, totally optional. 90% um, of the time, you're not even going to see it. Uh, anytime the roof's on, obviously, you won't see it. But if you have to pull it off, it just kind of gives it a, a smarter, neater appearance. All right, so we've used our burnt umber mixed thinned out mixed half and half with our magic wash and we've applied that all the way around. We're going to let that dry a little bit and then we'll start dry brushing it up uh, in various colors to give it more of an earthy tone. Generally I, I normally do more of a reddish color as the base of my earth but most of the places that I'm building terrain for have like laterite or volcanic soil so it's got a lot of red in it and I, the impression I got from watching some of the stuff on the YouTubes in this part of Belarus was that it really wasn't reddish clay it was very very dark rich soil so that's how I'm going to paint it but like I said there'll be enough grass and shrubs on it that it's not really going to be a big deal either way. I also wanted to make a point about why I use the the mat board that's treated with the sandable sealer. And you could do that with chipboard or whatever you're going to use as your basing. Just paint both sides of it with something like that just to seal it. And that way, no matter how much glue or paint or whatever you put on there, it will not warp. And it just makes it a lot easier to deal with later in the process. That also makes it very moisture proof in case you live in a high humidity area. All right, so that's dried overnight. Uh, what I'm going to do now is use some nutmeg brown as a highlight instead of a base color. And then we'll use some maple sugar tan on top of that. And that should give us a, a pretty nice effect. So we'll get a little of that. We'll kind of dry slash overbrush it. Just sort of do it to taste as always. You know me, I do things and just kind of do them until they come out the way you want them. Okay, and that gives it a nice rich, kind of a richness to that brown. Not so much that the red really is the dominant color as it is on my fallout stuff. You know, kind of a more wastelandy looking thing. That's one thing about the zone is it's it's very overgrown, it's very lush in, in many ways. Even someplace like the Red Forest, though it's extremely dangerous, the Red Forest itself is a fairly lush looking place is very deceptive so if you don't know where you're going that could be a, a bad place to end up and just like with the terrain uh, one of the things to think about when you use these things in games is you know you don't have to slavishly follow whatever's in the book take what comes in the book as a springboard and if you like it that's great use it but if you want to change something feel free 
you bought the rules, you can do whatever you want. The gaming police won't come take away your army mans. That'll make you happier and probably give your players a better experience because you're coming up with things that speak to you, that really mean something to you. So let's let this color dry as I wax philosophical and we'll put some maple sugar tan on in just a moment. While that's drying, I'm going to take the opportunity to do some highlighting on that uh, jam, that lower jam I put in there. So I'm just going to use some of that light gray and we'll kind of dry brush that in there just enough to sort of catch that wood grain. probably have to build up a few layers of it and if you get on the the earth right outside there that's fine we're gonna gonna use the maple sugar tan as a last highlight on that and the ground so it'll blend in it's not a problem all right so that that looks a lot better already all right so let's get set up for our maple sugar tan highlight all right so we'll go with our maple sugar tan Just very light dry brushing. Some of that nutmeg is still a little damp, so it'll kind of wet blend, and that's kind of a nice effect too. But you just want to really sort of accentuate the fact that there's some earthen surface there. And you could use a much finer grade of sand than I did to get a, a smoother effect. But there's no right or wrong. You know, it's, it's your world you're building, so uh, you've got a lot of latitude there. It's one thing if you're building, like, um, say, some of the islands that we fought in, over in the Second World War in the Pacific that had black volcanic sand. Obviously, you'd want to make that look pretty black. But for most places, there's a pretty good latitude of artistic interpretation as far as how you do your basing. Alright, so that's... It's got a nice bit of pop to it. It's not too bright. It'll dull down as it dries a little bit. All right, so in preparation to put some foliage on the base, we're gonna use a combination of materials. Uh, some of this good static grass flock. This is a little greener than the stuff I normally use for fallout. So I want it to look a little more alive. I'm gonna use some of our green tufts. And some of this field grass stuff that I've had lying around for a long time, uh, I can tell because Tom's trains has been gone for a while. So, uh, sadly, they're no longer around. But, um, in any case, we will start applying that and give it kind of a slightly overgrown look. Okay, so I'm going to start with some of these tufts probably about the easiest thing to begin with but you don't have to do it in this order it's probably just easier than trying to come back later and add them where there's other things already there maybe but we'll use a little PVA and then we will dig through our pile of tools get our tweezers Grab a tuft, put it right there, and just like most of the things I do, there's no hard and fast rule, it's just to taste. Um, sometimes there's things you can do that are better than the way I do them, and by all means, um, if you discover those, then do them, and let me know, so I can change. 
but you want to give it kind of a random appearance the way it is in nature and try to use different size tufts But this is the step where you can, if there's a particularly bare spot you want to cover, uh, oftentimes a tuft or some static grass makes a pretty easy way to cover that up. All right, so we'll put some more of those on. And, well, actually, we're almost done. We'll just stay here. One more little one right there. And don't worry about the glue that's exposed. It dries clear. So generally you will never even see it, especially once you put some matte varnish on this or whatever finish you're going to put on. Um, it'll knock any shine that's left residually. It'll knock it right back. So, All right, so that's that. And if you decide you don't have enough tufts later, you, you can certainly add some. So let's do some scenic grass. Um, I try to do it with a plate so that I can catch it. And here it's a little easier not to glue the base to your hand to add glue in kind of a larger area. And I want to kind of leave this walkway kind of clear so that it's questionable as to when was the last time somebody was in this house. All right, so we'll set that in a very inconvenient place. We'll get some of our static grass. All right, so we've got our grass applied fairly evenly around there. And uh, you can do as much or as little as you want. I wanted the earth to show through a little bit just to show it an earthy texture. But I also wanted it to be fairly overgrown and kind of wild with grass. It's obvious that somebody isn't taking care of this yard. It's just grass, so. All right, so we'll get set up to do some of our long grass. And we'll add that. That'll add some, some neat effects. Well, I should point out your custom mix of grass, anything that's left. One of the reasons I do it on a plate is so that it's easier to save. Let me just put it in some kind of a, a Ziploc bag or whatever. Ideally, if you had a, if you were going to do a large project and you had a lot of area you wanted to cover, you could take a couple of these large jars, empty them into something else, mix them the way you wanted, and then put that mix back in these jars so that you would you would have it. I would label it so you'd know, but or in case somebody coming after you wants to use it would know that that's not the stock color. Okay, so this, the long grass is a little different to use. You take a, a bunch and kind of just sort of manipulate it so that you have different lengths on top. And then get about what you want there as far as a length and then cut it evenly. And then your even spot will go wherever you glue it. And here again, we'll just take a little PVA, we'll plunk that in there. Of course, now we've got one of those long stalks of that stuck in the middle of it. So try to do a little neater than I do. And then just grab that and put that down in there. And that gives you uh, Pretty neat long grass effect. And kind of 
play with that a little bit. It's a little fiddly, but uh, it's worth it. You get that overgrown, weedy effect. So we'll, uh, we'll do some more of that. One of the things that might be a little helpful when you do this is uh, there'll be some exposed glue at the bottom and I put some more of that custom mix of static grass on there to kind of bolster that. Uh, so as that dries, it'll help solidify around that longer grass and sort of firm up what it's doing. And you'll have some stray things. Wait till that dries, then you can kind of take those away, cut them as you need. If it's too long, trim it down a little bit. But uh, I'll try to make those be a little straight there. But yeah, it's a neat effect. So something to play with. Again, you know, certainly not mandatory. You can get away with way less. But if you have this stuff, it's fairly cheap. A little of it goes a long way. And uh, it really does dress it up. So I encourage you to try it. And here is our house with our basing done. And again, that's just a question of how much you want to do. But uh, I like the effect. I think I'm pretty happy with it. So hopefully you do, and hopefully whatever you make turns out even better.